I title today's Neville Goddard Conversation Mind Map, A Change of State, A Radical Change of Life. So I mentioned in Thursday's video the importance of awareness and the importance of our state of consciousness. Being aware of our state of consciousness. And what I'd like to do, and also encourage for you, is to enter into an ideal state of consciousness. Go to the end as far as you can imagine. And when you get there, you'll imagine more. Imagination is infinite. Imagine more ideally. More often, ideally. In the different areas of your life, ideally, each day. And you'll see, your imaginings reflect as the outer aspects of your life. Everyone reflecting your inward ideal. So let's discuss this further today. Neville says, The light is consciousness. Consciousness is one, manifesting in legions of forms or levels of consciousness. There is no one that is not all that is, for consciousness, though expressed in an infinite series of levels, is not divisional. There's no real separation or gap in consciousness. I am cannot be divided. So, thoughts of separation between ourselves and what we desire, how we desire to live, can only exist in mind. They may be beliefs we have picked up from looking around this outer world and forming conclusions about ourselves, others, and how reality works. This is a key. You are not separate from what you desire. Now, while we have a human experience, which is a projection of our subconscious mind, which is made up of beliefs, many of them we might not be aware of. Consciousness, which is everything, is actually one in its essence, beyond any linear time, space, and beliefs. This is why telepathy, synchronicity, remote viewing, instant manifestation, and other what we would consider mystical phenomena happens. Now, one might not have allowed themselves for these possibilities because of beliefs. And this is why I encourage shedding restrictive beliefs. The ones that are no longer resonant with how you desire to be. Release identification to them. And I also say sometimes, they are looking to release identification to you. And so we release the control by letting them go. It's also important to acknowledge that this outer world is made up of beliefs, a body of beliefs, where one might think themselves to be identified with or we could say bound to those beliefs. They actually are not. They are occupying a state of consciousness, and this outer is mirroring it. They have awareness of the state they occupy, and from this foundation, they are free to choose and occupy any state of consciousness. And a state is a body of beliefs, as he says here. A state is an attitude of mind, a state of experience with a body of beliefs which you live by. So in recap thus far, you are formless awareness. Consciousness is one, and you choose what state of consciousness you occupy. So all day long, we may be switching states. I like to remain in my ideal state, where I acknowledge I am free, complete, have everything, get to enjoy it all, experience what I'd like to experience, and if I desire something, I imagine it as already done. The desire is already fulfilled. What I desire desires me. The desire is mutual. And if I experience anyone, I can only imagine them 
ideally. This to me is the ideal state, heaven on earth. Now the results are wonderful. In how I relate with others and how they relate with me in business, personal, friendship, family, which is ideal. Showing up increasingly more so each day and you and I are no different. We may only appear different to the five senses. All is mind, one mind. The universe is mental or consciousness and reality reflects what we are being in consciousness and you are free to enter into any state. So again, consciousness is one and you choose what state you occupy and thus you transcend the state as your true essence is formless awareness. You are a formless free spirit, not bound by matter, traveling through states of consciousness as he says here. And so we start with I. The I has neither face, form, nor figure, but it does mold itself into structure by all that it consents to. Now one might not know of the beliefs that went into molding this I, as he says here, inner formless I into form, which is then projected as our environment, as our conditions of life. So you are that inner formless I formless awareness, and you choose a state to occupy, and as consciousness is one with all, you then experience the world from that state, which again, is a body of beliefs. So this formless I, which is you, beyond body and mind, is moving through states all day long. The one that we tend to return to more often is the one that we could call our concept of self or our dwelling place. And even that, we can change it if we like. And we can observe what state we are in by how we think, behave, and emotionally relate, and by asking ourselves a simple question, if you want this to be ideal. Is this what I'm thinking, behaving, and emotionally relating? From the premise of fulfilled desire, as I am already the person I desire to be inside, remembering that the outer is rearranging to reflect the vision. So, if the senses seem to deny and we're thinking a certain way or believing a certain way, emotionally relating a certain way, that the senses seem to deny that we already are the ideal that we desire to be, we release the control and we'll find ourselves remaining in our desired state. And then we experience no force, no control. Everything continues to naturally rearrange to reflect as the realization of our vision. And so he says here, how do you get out of a state Let's say someone was in an undesirable state. He says, through belief. You must believe in the doctrine. You are told, whatsoever you desire, believe you have received it and you will. Can you believe the precept that believing you have already received your desire will bring it forth in your world? If so, then tonight you can change the things that are happening in your world. So you imagine yourself into any state. You assume that you are that person now and accept that suggestion. And what I found to be helpful, if you would like to define with clarity your ideal state conceptually, as you can also feel your way through life and you don't have to conceptualize it, I like to do both as applicable. I released a vision video at the start of the year. I recommend it. I'll link in the description to it. I like to explore what I consider ideal in many areas of my life and continue to refine them after they are experienced. The areas I brought up were spiritual, intellectual, physical, family, financial, personal, and career. These are categories I like to work with. You can make up your own also to define whatever you consider to be ideal. And they're all related to my ideal state. For example, Financial could be a certain amount of income, certain amount saved and invested, 
and return on investment, etc. Personal could be the kind of relationships you would like to have. So we're bringing into our mind's eye a higher degree of clarity and accepting those ideals as the way it is so that as we go through life, if anything shows up that is not what we would consider ideal, we don't have to accept reality that way and remain operating from our ideal state. And then it changes. The ideal results happen. And then you can further refine them if you'd like. So back in the days, I never heard of the law explained and applied this way, which is to pick a state, which is a body of beliefs. And you define this body of beliefs and the attributes of the state. And I consider the ideal state as having it all. That's a core belief of the ideal state. And then live from it. And then eventually it becomes your dwelling place as you experience all that you want in life, the ideal state. You see, when I came across this kind of information in 2004, the workings of the law specifically, Napoleon Hill said, if you believe that money is a result of hard work alone, perish the thought. My goal was to get out of debt. And when I first read this statement, I found it offensive. As I had worked very hard since I was a teenager. However, this was a nuanced point. The hard work being referred to as unnecessary force, control, stress, and frustration, rather than allowing for creative imagination as we discussed in Thursday's video. I'll link in the description to it. There's no problem with being committed to your work. Certainly professionals are committed. It is the state of consciousness operated from. So I said, what are the alternatives? And the idea that popped up was releasing control. So I accepted that suggestion. I entered into that state and it happened. Additional income started showing up unexpectedly and I got out of debt. And I also realized that I had enough saved up to buy my first house. And what was interesting was the one I went to go see, which was the perfect fit. And like with all matters of the heart, you know, there was one book on the coffee table and it was Think and Grow Rich. And upon speaking with the previous owner, it turns out that he loved it as well. He ran a merchant service business. And so the house was perfect for me at the time and I ended up buying it. So it's amazing how with a change in consciousness, the opportunities that were always there reveal themselves. So in relation to states, I encourage returning back into your ideal state if you fall out of it. As he says here, I did it, I'm doing it, and I will continue to do it until that which I have done is perfectly externalized within my world. So if you enter into an undesirable state, for whatever the reason may be, assume yourself back into your ideal state and then you think, emotionally relate, and behave accordingly and how the world responds and relates to you changes as well. You get better at this by not reacting to the world. I trust you'll find last Sunday's video helpful when it comes to not reacting. I'll link in the description to it. So choose your state. Otherwise, you could assign whatever random state and it might not be desirable. You have all the power to choose. And from doing this, you'll notice it. People, environment, information, shows up in a mutually beneficial way, a mutually harmonious way related to your ideal. And you'll also find it's harmoniously related to the ideal of others. So choose your state. Choose the life that you really want to live. You know the way and the different attributes of what you would consider to be ideal. Acknowledge and accept them inwardly. And then they are reflected outwardly from your ideal state and it keeps going, so it seems, to higher degrees of ideal. Look within yourself to find these ideals and accept them as your style is the ideal style, the best style. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I accept that all I love is already mine. As I allow everything to happen naturally, by what I consider ideal, 
in all its vivid nuance and specificity, as I acknowledge that the desires of my heart are already done for me. I am a free, formless spirit who gives form to body and world by rearranging my mind and thus imagining worlds and experiences into existence wherever I go through flow, joy, bliss, and ease. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.